Shooting USA is brought to you by SnapSafe and the full line of affordable security products from modular safes to lockboxes. Save 15% with code SUSA15 at SnapSafe.com. Welcome again to the Shooting USA YouTube channel. We're glad you're here. An interesting factoid, some of our more popular videos see as many as 75 or 80% of you are not subscribed to our channel. If you like the content you're seeing, please honor us with a subscription. And if you're interested in full-length current episodes of Shooting USA after it airs on the network, there's a link in this video's description to our Vimeo channel. Now, here's the content you came to see. The legendary M1 Garand. When it served as the U.S. standard issue rifle in World War II, its impact on the battlefield was undeniable. And the effectiveness of the Garand was not lost on the German military armed with bolt-action Mausers that dated back to the First World War. For Nazi Germany, the pressure was on to develop a semi-automatic battle rifle that could match the repeating firepower of the M1. The result is now one of history's guns. American GIs called it Hitler's Garand. And in World War II, it fulfilled Nazi Germany's quest to supply their rifle regiments with a greater rate of fire, the semi-automatic Walther G43. Really, really a fine gun, good rugged gun. It was a, an adequate sniper rifle. Uh, all in all, highly favored by the troops. The Gewehr 43 was the result of Germany's desire to develop an all-new battle rifle with semi-automatic capabilities. The goal was an advanced design that would complement the huge numbers of bolt-action Mauser rifles still serving in the hands of the German infantry. Even though Germany's primary weapon, primary infantry arm during World War II was the, the K-98K Mauser, right from the beginning, they were interested in, in arming the troops with some semi-auto rifles. And that interest was made only greater by the growing presence of semi-automatic rifles among Hitler's potential foe. The Germans always were a little, little uh, you know, jealous of the fact that the Americans were using a, a, a semi-auto rifle as its primary firearm. They saw how well the, uh, the Russian Tokarevs worked, so they wanted to have their own semi-auto rifles, and, and I don't blame them. In, in 1941, they came up with the G41 rifle. It was a big, long, heavy gun, uh, and it fired by kind of a captured gas system at the end of the muzzle. Bottom line is, it didn't work all that well. Arbitrary restrictions placed on the G41's design by the German military resulted in a complex, difficult to maintain system that proved unreliable in the field. They kept experimenting, and in 1943, Walther uh, started producing what was called the G43, or also the K43, G standing for Gewehr, meaning rifle, and K for carabiner. There was no difference in the rifles. Walther's new design had many improvements over its G41 predecessor, perhaps the most important being a mechanism that used a much simpler and far more reliable ported gas system to operate the bolt. Much of the intricate machining of the G41 was replaced by stamped steel parts, and rather than solid wood, the stocks were laminated. Together, these changes made the G43 lighter, tougher, and far easier to produce. And they made a ton of them. They made a slug of them. Most of them had integral rails on the side, you know, for use with a ZF4 scope, which was a pretty good little scope. And consequently, the rifle uh, served pretty well in the sniper role. One detail that wasn't changed was the potent round that the G43 delivered. The 7.9 uh, by 57, or 8 millimeter Mauser, they call it, is a superb round. It was used by the Germans all the way through uh, pre-World War I, World War I, and World War II. Great cartridge, great caliber, but you know, about 30 odd six equivalent, you know, right, right thereabouts. I mean, it's got, it's got a lot of, got a lot of punch to it. American troops seeing the G43 in action couldn't help but draw a comparison. It was called by the the GIs Hitler's. Grand. Um, some people say that it was better than the Grand. It's a good gun, I, but I don't think it's as good as the Grand. Uh, it has a couple of good features. It has a detachable box magazine. You could carry 
loaded magazines and, and change them if you wanted to. The gun could also be loaded, uh, you know, with a five-round clip, the same five-round clip that uh, was used in the K98K Mauser. Used two of these uh, to charge the rifle and uh, worked just fine. Plus, it could be topped up, uh, unlike the Garand. The disadvantages of it were that the bolt system was not, it was a little fussier than that of the Grand, but by the same token, the G43 worked pretty darn well. Though not as prolific as the Garand or the bolt action Mauser, over 400,000 G43s and K43s were produced from 1943 to 1945, the majority serving successfully in battle. Practically every G43 that was made went into action and they all worked very, very well. You hear virtually no complaints about them. I've shot lots and lots of G43 and I'd have no compunction about taking one into battle. It's a really, really good gun. By the war's end, Germany had fallen short of the effort to fill the ranks with semi-auto rifles. The Gewehr 43's relative ease of production was not enough to help offset the late arrival on the battlefield and turn the tide against American GIs armed with millions of M1 Garands. Well, you've made it to the end of another Shooting USA video on YouTube, and for that, we thank you. It does help the channel if you subscribe, like, and comment, and that will help us keep the content coming.